everybody, welcome to the Frontier Preppers channel. My name is Billy and today we're going to be talking about living off the land the way that I know. But before we do that, if you don't mind, check our content, see if you like it. If you do, consider subscribing, sharing our videos, liking our videos, and most importantly, please hit that notification bell. It will let you know when we post new content. Without further ado, let's discuss. As many of you know, I come from a third world country. I come from Cuba. In Cuba, everything is done by hands. In here, we have the ability of uh, machinery, and that makes our lives way easier. You can trust me on this. And in order for me to explain myself a little better, I'm going to give you a few examples and a few stories of how things are handled in Cuba. That way, you will know what to expect when this shit hits the fan, because that's how we're going to have to live. Exactly the same way that people in Cuba live. Hopefully not. But. If. An SHTF happens tomorrow. The first thing you're going to have is. Zero. Gas. Or diesel. Why? Because the government is going to take over. All that gas. All that diesel. For their needs. And they're going to leave us, peasants, with pretty much nothing. How do I know that? Because that is exactly the same thing that Cuba did. The government took over the diesel, they took over the gasoline. In fact, you you were giving um, uh, tickets or uh, vouchers to buy gasoline only if you own a vehicle. Uh, you were giving vouchers uh, to buy diesel only if you own a diesel vehicle, whether it was a tractor, whether it was a truck, whatever it was. Meaning that if you don't have a vehicle or a tractor or something like that, you don't get neither diesel or gasoline. You have to buy it in the black market. Hence the fact that people with cars and tractors, well, they're not many. So a lot of folks have to do it the old fashioned way. Now, for those of you who think the old-fashioned way is the best way to do it, there is a reason why most of us don't want to do it. It is really hard. It is very labor-intensive. Um, if you have back problems, yeah, you're going to be hurting a lot. Um, the thing is, and this is, this is something that I want everybody to understand, Technology has made our life way, way easier. Way easier. If you tell me right now, would I rather have a tractor or just do everything by hand? I will flat out tell you without a, a drop of hesitation. Billy wants a tractor. A tractor. Please give me a tractor. It makes my life it will make my life way easier. Now, but say that you don't have a tractor. Because you can't afford a tractor. There's no diesel. Why not? Well, here comes the kicker. Here comes the kicker. Here in the U.S., a lot of people are used to mules. To tilt the land. Um, to plow uh, the land. You see, all those things. I am not used to mules. I am used to oxes. And those who don't know what an ox is, it is pretty much a bull with no nuts. Yeah. And don't, don't leap them because um, they're not easy to train. Now, the way that I'm used to, they have, they're actually... They have a big stick on top of their heads, and it's called a, a yugo. I, I don't know that what it is in English, to tell you the truth. But essentially, it binds them both together. And that way, you can plow the ground. You can just move heavy equipment, all those things. You can have a... a um, uh, you can haul your water. That's the way we haul our water. Um... Lots of things. You can pull a car if you have to. You can pull a car if you have to. Now, 
I can't speak about mules because, quite frankly, we didn't doubt with them so much. We doubt with oxes. Uh, so, mules are a foreign con uh, concept for me, to tell you the truth. Uh, we have horses. Horses were for riding and for pulling uh, carriages or a wagon, or however you want to call it. That's it. Here's the thing. Those oxes, you needed to take care of them like babies. I mentioned before in prior videos that those animals have identification papers like a person in Cuba. If they die, they better die for natural causes. Because otherwise, you facing criminal charges. If somebody stole them, the government will come and say to you, it was your fault. You get a fine. Possibly jail time. I'm not BSing you. I'm telling you the truth. But here's the thing. Those were your animals that you needed to work. Those were working animals. You need those animals because if you want to do an acre of land, if you plan to tell those things by hand, unless you Hercules... You're going to have a really hard time if you don't have animals. So those were working animals. You get up in the morning. You, uh, I can't remember the name of that, for crying out loud. If I find it, I put it in the, uh, below. Uh, but you put the yugo on them, and then you take them. Uh, and then you work the land and whatnot. And midday, you stop because it's too hot for them. You let them rest. Uh, you take them to drink water and all of that. So not only you have to take care of the lamb, but you also have to take care of the animal. And I don't know about y'all, but it is no fun when you're plowing the land of the ground and you step on a big potty of poop. It happens. Animals poop. Remember what I said in the previous video? You're going to be covering in, in, in crap all day long. And that is the truth. Most folks do everything by hand. Just um, with the hose. Or, and, I, and I'm having pictures. I'm putting pictures so you all can understand uh, what I'm talking about. Fertilizer. Really hard to come by. When you find it, do you think you take precautions? Nobody took precautions. We just grab it by hand and just spread it out. Same thing with uh, insecticides. You put that backpack on you and you start cranking that sucker and you start spraying all over. You don't worry about cancer or anything like that. Those things, you don't care because you care more about living right now about life at the moment. That's gonna kill you 20 years down the line. You don't care about 20 years. So you got enough trouble surviving today. I am telling you all, living off the land, the way the Hollywood puts it out there, it's not the reality. It is not the reality. I don't know about you all, but I want you to see this right here, or right here, and I want you to tell me if you think that plowing that ground with so many rocks will be easy. Those blades are going to get dull, going to get ding. And if you have to do it by hand, oh, God almighty. Now, imagine now that you have to dry some rice, for example. Rice. Where are you going to dry it? Here's a picture, here's a picture of people drying rice in Cuba on the road. You're going to see that all the time. Why? Because there's no, there's no silos to put those things. Then you put it in, in, in balos and then you put it away. Weevils? <sighs> Weevils are just part of food, to tell you the truth. I mean, I remember uh, mom uh, all the time just 
going through the rice, you, she would put all the rice on the table and just going little by little, removing rocks, removing, uh, killing the wibbles, uh, removing fly, uh, the, um, the moss, the, the, the larvas in there, um, spider, little spider webs in there too. All of that, you have to remove it. And you got little piles going on. And then you get that rice and you wash that rice. Over there, it's not like here. They, they tell you, oh, watch the rice because it has vitamins. You better watch that rice. You don't know what has been in that rice. You don't know. So you better watch it. So you put it in the water and you, you watch it really good. And you don't throw away that water. You don't. You put it in a bucket. You put it in a bucket. You know why? Because that water is, along with your leftovers, is what you're going to feed you pigs later on. What we call sancocho, which is a mix of all the leftovers and whatnot. Uh, whatever milk was left over from, from the morning, dump it in there. So every house has like a big bucket. Full of sancocho. That way, at the end, when it's full, you go and take it to the pigs and you put it in the cut off, cutting half tire, because that's how we fed the pigs. When they cut off tire, we put it in there. You know what we did when we did the rice? Because you got to take the rice and remove the husk. We took the husk. We added that husk to the sancocho, to that water. And that leftover food and all of that because that blow up. We use that to feed the pigs. I have to tell you, the one thing that I am proud of is that there was no uh, waste at all. We used everything. We have to use everything. We didn't have a choice. But I want you all to understand that living off the land is not as easy as people led you to believe. It really is not. Bear in mind what I'm telling you that I lived through. And I got to tell you, when I hear folks saying to me, I'm just going to live off the land and I'm going to I'm going to be successful. I question those things. I question them because I know what it takes and I know how hard it could it can be. Can it be done? People are doing it right now. Yes, it can be done. But it's a hard life. Really, really hard life. Hard life that, truth to be told, I'd rather use technology to help me out and um, be more comfortable. I'm honest with y'all. I would love to be more comfortable than I just do it by hand. So, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Like I was rock on, prep on, and I will see you on the next one. Bye-bye, everybody.